morning, happy Friday, and welcome to Beyond the Sim. I'm Sean Cole with my co-host, Billy Strange. How you doing, Billy? Good. It's wink, wink, Friday morning. Yeah, it's Friday morning. My ass, it's like the middle of the night, Wednesday. <laughs> Dude, we are partying, party animals. It's late night. Yeah. We should have a talk show. You oh, know, that's, sorry. that's a bad joke. idea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. So we are here, uh, one of those moments where we are doing a pre-recorded show, as we've mentioned. So if you're following along, talk amongst yourselves, but uh, we're not here. We are here for our normal conversation, but we can't quite interact with you like normal, which is too bad, but we want to carry on even in my absence because I'm actually out of town if you're watching this Friday. Uh, so how you been, Billy? What have you been up to in sim racing? Good. Just let everybody know. I'll remember it this time. Don't forget, we're also, the show, in case you can't catch it live, is on Stitcher. It's no longer iTunes, Apple Podcasts, that's what it is, and SoundCloud. That's the other one. Jeez. <laughs> it's Wednesday so anyway, night. That's, yeah, right? It's the audio version on there. Let's see. So I haven't done, had a chance to do a whole lot, but I did get a chance to run the FR90s, and I'm working on a video for that. So by this time, hopefully I'll have it done and you'll already have seen it, but I like it. The FR90s are fun. Uh, the different engine sounds, the V10 sounds very clean and pristine uh -huh. on the engine sound where the V12 and the V8 sound a little bit more, I think it's a personal preference thing. I don't like clean engine audio. I do like it to have like a, this visceral uh, almost like it's exploding your eardrums kind of sound right when it's at full song so the v10 sounds really clean the v12 sounds the best to me uh-huh i think they handle a little differently true to form with race room i believe they've made subtle changes because usually the weight in those cars will be a little different or whatever but i don't know if that's was me just getting better or not but i think they handle slightly different the the V8 seems to turn in a little sharper. The V12 seems to be a little bit more planted, feels a little right. heavier. Um, all in all, they're fun. They're, they I seem to run about the same lap time with all three cars, so it's not like the balance of performance is off. Right. Um, the the livery choices are really cool. It was like if they could have made these liveries back then, <laughs> you could have seen these on real, real open wheel. We won't say the f word but those cars back then right so i think they did a really good job with that i think some of them are actually real because a lot of those cars get converted to hill climb cars so i think some of those are actually hill climb cars if i'm not mistaken i think that's what i heard like one hill, or two of the devs hill say. climb liveries yeah okay. okay so like the guys that bought the car you know yeah. then changed livery on the car i think it's the livery of the hit now hill climb car or, or whatnot but <laughs> And that's really the only driving I got to do, but I, I really enjoyed the the time that I spent with it. They're not as radical as I thought they would be, but they're fun. And again, it's probably like I mentioned in the video, it's it's probably my nostalgia coming through that you know I kind of grew up with these cars, right? So I, I have a very distinct attachment to them. So I'm sure that influences you know my my appreciation for these and race room really or typically does a good job with the older material right the classic stuff so uh, if you like race room and you're into the 90s era open wheel cars wink wink nudge nudge unofficial cars uh, <laughs> i'd say give them a shot i think they run really well i would compare them to the automobilista stuff okay which they also have unofficial versions of I, I find it interesting that you went right to the, excuse me, the sounds of the game, because that was absolutely my first thought when I saw them. I'm like, man, I can't right. wait to hear those things, you know. And I think that's what made that era very distinct. Also, you know, is the 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 sounds that I think that's kind of changed in a lot of the modern racing. Uh, everyone, forgive me. Apparently, all of a sudden, I'm sneezy stuffy so who knows how things are gonna happen here i don't know why. i i feel fine i'm just tired but uh anyway all right what else so fr90 what else that's really it that's all the time that i've that i've had to run except we i ended up running got a chance to run the trucks with you guys and that was fun we did right. a rally cross 
did a rally cross race with the trucks. So, and it actually um, even goes back to Friday night with the truck trucks. Oh, it does. I forgot we did do the the trucks, and that was <laughs> whoops. <laughs> <laughs> whoops, whoops. You know, I would say that the the sim community might even say that you were behind the shenanigans because somehow you made the magic choice. Right, <laughs> I swear on everything that was not planned because I got irritated because I couldn't run my my liver, you know, my paint scheme, and then I was like, ah, uh, whatever. And then we get into the race, and everybody's like, um, there's a problem with the Toyota Mall. <laughs> now, as it turns out, there is no problem with the Toyota. So if if you right. watched our Friday night's shenanigans, we'll call it, um. The the problem was just with an old host a, a hosted session that had been set up prior to the change, and I think we've resolved it. So Friday night everything should be restored and normal. I'm crossing my fingers on that. Anyway, that was kind of funny, and that was, but it still ended up being fun, I guess. Well, um, I probably did. wasn't as fun for you guys, but uh, I I had fun. I had fun being a complete noob while I was out there running. Oh my goodness, start. Get out into the, you know, run second to mark. Get out in the lead, lead a good, what, third, almost half of the race. We take a pit stop, and I just slid right through my pit box up against the wall. <laughs> so not only did I have to back up, I had to, like, weasel my way over. By that time, I go all the way to the back, work my way back through, chasing Mark back down for the lead. And I found it interesting. I don't know if it was just the setup or what, but I thought i would be okay as coming off a of four the truck started to drift just a hair and with the older truck i'll say i could just roll out of the throttle a little bit correct and just kind of wait for it to get straight and then squeeze back in the throttle well i i saved it squeezed back in the throttle and it just lit the tires up and man i did a hard right turn i was headed for the fence instead i missed the fence but spun around through the grass hit and i went i clipped the cone on the pit road <laughs> the pace car and it gave me it gave me a black flag oh oh wow complete complete noob and then um you you were trying to be nice since... what, what i don't remember anything i the last thing i actually remember in that race is you <laughs> having that black flag incident that's <laughs> it it just kind of went to a blur after that i don't recall i don't know Sean sacrificed his truck soul for me and, and cleared the black flag. And then, um, yeah, just just decided to have a conversation with the fence. It was it was a good conversation. And then out of that conversation, a yellow flag happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that helped me again. I think Sean just sacrificed his truck so that I could get back in the race. And so then I had a handful of laps at the end and man, I was driving the, I think I ran the fastest lap of the race out of everybody in that last stint. Uh -huh. Um, cause I was, man, I was driving really hard and I think I worked back up to like fourth or fifth, whatever it was, <laughs> but it, it was fun. I, you know, I know we were all not really taking it super serious because the, the Toyota, the setup was just, it loaded the wrong setup from our previous uh, series. So I think there was, we were just kind of just running just for fun, but I still had a good time. I just, I was, man, <laughs> I, I, every time I went into the pits, I made a mistake. Right. Like every time I went into the pits, I was just like uh, leaving the pits on the last one, the last yellow, I crossed over the, the line too early. <laughs> And so I had to start in the back again. I was like, I'm like, what in the hell is your problem? Ah, <sighs> so uh, it was fun. And then it, we had a good time with the, the trucks at, uh, we did the Daytona long. Right. Rally cross. And what I appreciate is when the dust flies, you can't see anything. I, I messed up qualifying. So I had to start, I think I started like, I don't know, sixth or fifth or something. It was like second row, like in the middle of everybody. And we all go down into turn one and I just shut off and everybody ah! flies <laughs> into the corner. Uh, and then I proceeded to just slowly work my way up. You won it. Um, but it was fun because I had some really, really good battles with like Tyson and Jesse and 
uh, Dudek, and who else? There was a tight. Ty- yeah, I said Tyson already. But anyway, I had great battles. Tyson and I actually were back and forth, and it was it was fun. The, the trucks are just so well suited for battling. I mean, it's like that's like it's it's like it doesn't matter what position you're in. You usually find yourself in a battle that that lasts like a long time too. It's not just right. like oh, I'll get him this corner and then it's over. Like no. It could go on for five laps, <laughs> you know, easily. So, yeah, the trucks have been amazing. Anything yeah. else? Trucks, trucks, FR90. That's it. Now now that you've jogged my memory, that's that's all that I have done. What about, well, we know partially what you did. Yeah, I, I did a, a handful of what you've done. I didn't get to ch- try out the FR90. Uh, wanted to, but didn't. I did trucks Friday nights. So we already talked about that. Um in the Pro 2, Pro 4 trucks. Notice he just skipped right over his recap. He's just like, yep, we did that. Okay, you know what? I got to own it. That's fair. <laughs> I'm, the, no, I'm teasing you. No, you no. I, 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 I've been given a little thought. And, uh, you know, that is the whole point of this show, right? Um, So if you didn't watch, and it might even be worthy of watch. I'm not saying go watch the race. It was actually a not an entertaining night i don't think i don't think it represented us or sim racing all that well but if you want to see me on the brink of total meltdown (laughs) you actually would have to watch the whole thing because there are various points of near meltdown but if you go to the end you can pretty much get the gist of it so when you get to the it's not actually the end actually i don't yeah i'd let the rest of the race play um, but as Billy mentioned, he picked up a black flag and then I decided that I was such a skilled driver that mid corner, I could reach over with my mouse and magically bring up that menu and find among the long ass list in bizarrely wrongly <laughs> contrasted colors, uh, clear black flags. And I did do that. Actually, that. I am you did. Capable. You did do it, but it was hard to do that and actually watch where you're going and hit the <laughs> wall. And and th- th- that's not the part that upsets me though. The I can't remember who I collected, but it wasn't just oh look I put it in the wall and I'm out of the race. It's I put it in the wall. I collected somebody else into the mix, so somebody else took on damage, and I caused another caution on what was already a very rough night on the group. So cautions to me are the what ruins things at times, you know. And it was one of those moments, and I just felt like, man, I just ruined this whole thing um, from start to finish. So anyway, <laughs> I will own it. You know what? You got to be smarter than that. If you are, I mean, like, I, I really need to say that if I'm racing, I can't be an admin. No different than anybody else. It's like, you know what? That's The game has its own rules. I'm not here to clear black flags. I'm sorry you got one. Maybe right. if there's a caution, if I could do it, but certainly not under green flag. Yeah, it didn't throw a caution for me, so I wasn't, I wasn't gonna clear my own black flag, and I was just like, ah, eh, you know. Oh, that's I right. Was, You're uh, an admin. What am I right? doing? <laughs> but I wasn't gonna clear my own black flag, <laughs> and so I was just kind of like, you know, that's my fault. I. If I hadn't have spun the tire, I wouldn't have had that happen where I just clipped the pits and it gave me a black flag for speeding in the pits. So I was like, I'm just going to own it. Go in, take my lumps. But, you know, I appreciate your sacrifice, like I said. All right. So my next guilty confession of the night, this has become a therapeutic session for me. I should <laughs> I should just lay down. Late nights, yeah, get yourself a couch. It's too late. I'm tired, you know. My mom, you know, when I was growing up, my mom, she... No, I'm um how do, how does that make you feel? <laughs> I So uh <laughs> go on. Saturday and Sunday I drove 16 hours of Pro 2 and Pro 4 trucks. Holy crap. So you and I yes, we did do that race. Nice. That, that was one of one of 16 of the sessions that I put up between Saturday morning and Sunday night. Uh, yeah, I did four in the morning, four at oh, night. I got to run one of those, damn. Both days. I'm possessed with this truck. And 
I'm not at home able to race right now. So I'm like, the season is now started of this redundant back and forth between two track season that I must participate in. And I'm already missing everything. So that's how I feel. Um, and then beyond that, I went to E3. So Monday was setup day. I'm working with VRX simulations and the WRC8 booth, or Big Ben booth, I should say, but affiliated more with that title within their library of games. Um, and maybe the star of the show, because out front is our motion sim playing their game. So, um, And that's been interesting, because for like 10 years in a row, I've covered E3. And I've never, ever, ever worked E3. So... No, well, there you go. Yeah, it was kind of... An, an, an experience. It, yeah, it's, it was, it's been an experience. I'm midway through it right now. So Monday was setup day. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are the days of the show. And it's Wednesday night right now. So I'm two days through the show. Um, and it's been really interesting. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's what I've been up to. So... Um, I guess we have a little bit of news and then a few items a few to discuss. Pieces. Yeah, you know, it's just, yeah. we're only midweek is kind of the problem here. So it's only been five days since our last show. Um, but there are a few things that are significant. So, I mean, number one, and you know more about this because I, all I heard and I got it on my feed when I was at E3 was the 1.02 fix was now live on Steam on a set of Corsa. So I bring that up to you and um, I guess there's – little more detail to the story that you know or could describe better than me i should say well they just the 1.0.2 was they have a beta branch so if you want to test out the upcoming build you can opt into that so they just released that the actual hotfix using that 1.0.2 on the 10th so a couple days ago as of recording this and I thought I saw a few things. Yeah, they say the mid-session uh, save functionality has been deactivated. So they had originally put it into that beta branch of this. And then when it went to actual ACC for that hotfix, they took it out because they're still working on it. But it did flesh out a whole list of improvements most of you have already messed with it, so there's no reason to go over it. But it, it's good to see that they're still improving it. Right. Um, and I'll leave it there. Well, and, and it says mouse support in VR, which I know for a fact you didn't get to try. Um, but that and could... Mouse, uh, yeah, mouse in VR. Mouse support in VR. Yeah. So I guess you can see your cursor when you're mm-hmm. in VR, which is uh, cool because we'll see if... I have to talk to some of my VR people, VR buddies, to find out if that's a game changer at all <laughs> i've all heard right. some say it should have been in there to begin with but well it's yeah neither here nor there it's in there now and then that mid it's so funny mid session save functionality isn't that exactly what we talked about there's a <laughs> lot of the things that they put in there that i that i had listed so um don't want to go into it again just it's good that they are continuing to Address. Add in the features that weren't there to begin with. How about that? I like that. Good wording. Tactfully stated. All right. So I guess this I, I guess this is update week because Dirt Rally Two also got a little. I guess it's kind of like a little mini upgrade. I don't think this is a big one, but they did just update a uh, server side hotfix for the engine upgrade progression bug that was reported. I didn't know about that bug, but there you go. Right. Well, they also have just to kind of reiterate they have clubs now too so that's going back to the first dirt rally you now have clubs so you can do that where you've met somebody you know makes a set of rallies and you have x amount of days to complete it and it'll add up your time so that's that's good we they've again this is kind of one of those things where it's just like acc and this this was in the original dirt game and then it's taken them this long to put it into dirt 2.0 still they're updating it. That's nice. They just put out uh, version 1.5. Yes, yeah, so that's version 1.5 of 2.0. It's very confusing. <laughs> uh, but 
again, uh, I mean, at least they're not abandoning the product. When uh, working a WRC booth, Dirt Rally obviously becomes one of the topics brought up by the Sim Savvy and Lime. You know, sure. um, so that was kind of interesting, like having constant conversations of comparison from the guys waiting to drive it. So once they drive it, they disappear. You never see them again, right? So well, you, you talk to them the whole time building up to the moment that they're in and it's, oh, and well, dirt rally. And yeah, and then you never get the other side of the argument. And it's like, I can only say so much because I'm you're going to experience it for yourself, right? You know, mm-hmm. so anyway, uh, that was kind of interesting. A little side note from dirt rally. Um, this what's, what's going on with Fnatic? Fnatic. This is actually kind of cool. So since update 1.39 to Gran Turismo Sport, they now have support for their steering wheel display. So while that display has worked in all the PC stuff, Gran Turismo, I mean, that's actually kind of awesome when you're now talking about playing like Xbox, PlayStation level games, and they're now starting to give some of that interaction um, that has been the norm in PC, but I didn't ever think we'd even see on the console level. Like, I just didn't ever think it would bridge that gap. And, and that's, I mean, that's kind of a big deal, but to have the display actually work on the wheel versus just being dead. So So now you got the Thrustmaster one, which is a separate piece, I believe that little dash, the right, the one that you can use for the PS4. Uh, and now Fnatic has their stuff working. So slowly, People don't like this. Slowly merging together, slowly okay. what do you know? implementing more things. How long? How long will it be? <laughs> Until everybody goes to the PC. Oh, it's already a PC. Or to the um, to the Uniconsole, the Taco Bell. The we'll Uniconsole. <laughs> the, the Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's move on to iRacing. They had this is the first road course of the year for the peak and a freeze right yeah i believe so sonoma so it says Zelensky leads flag to flag i didn't get a chance to catch it yet usually i kind of watch it you know a day or two later because it comes on when i can't i can't watch it live but it sounds like he says he completely dominated the field at sonoma raceway in his joe gibbs racing toyota leading all 55 laps to earn his first victory of the 2019 e nascar peak and to freeze iRacing series season that is a really long name <laughs> it is it's ridiculously long and then even when they do it if they're to do any kind of like e n p a i it's so long that no matter what they did it's still going to be a nightmare <laughs> right <laughs> and pass <laughs> um, good i mean I, sounds I'm like lo- you had them covered i'm looking at the picture of crossing the line and i i just have to confess it's really cool seeing somebody cross the line in sim racing in a Joe Gibbs interstate batteries, you know, Levante. Yeah, I think it looks cool. Like, like that is a picture that has been synonymous and burned in my brain kind of mm-hmm. thing. And to see it, not just in sim racing, because I've seen it before in sim racing, but to have it be real. You know, that is... Yeah, it's just the top level, yeah. Yeah, that is really yeah, the Joe the Gibbs car. Joe Gibbs, yep. You know, and yeah, it's it like... Is a, it is a cool correlation, or not correlation, that's the wrong word, but it, it is a co- uh, good... Uh, Parallel? I'm going to stop talking. Yeah, thank you. It's late. It is late. I love it. We should do late night shows live one time. There like you go. like we like planned out. We should tell everyone on a on a Friday where like, <laughs> hey, we're gonna do a late night Friday live. Well, it, it, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's it's evening when we do it for the UK. It's like late afternoon, early evening for mm-hmm. Europe. Yeah, I think we need to do that. That'll be fun. Plus, it'll have us in a totally different mindset. Because I can tell you, right. I'm a different mindset at 11 o'clock with total exhaustion than i am at i was gonna say i think i've burned up all my brain cells today <laughs> all right um this so is on this yeah. this is phenomenally huge news actually to us i think um so the latest <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> reel them in well like 
the minute Project Scarlet or the next gen console by Xbox was announced, everyone's going freaking out. Will my stuff still work? Right? I mean, it was like no one right. even cared about what the thing could or couldn't do. It was, will my stuff still work? And the answer is yes. So, yes. I mean, that is that is that's awesome. News. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is that is For really those that are using a console. That's that's great news. And hopefully that in turn means that when the PS5 or whatever is happening, that they would have to, in you know, do that as well. Right. I mean, yep. they seem to Cross your fingers. work that way with each other. All right. You get the next All one. All right, Sean. Oh, uh, I, I love hey, it. Hey, what, what do you think about Legos? Do you, you like Legos? No, no, no. I love Legos. I mean, right. I really, like, I don't actually own a single Lego in my house sitting here today. But you know what? If, like, I was just sitting there and there was a box of Lego on the floor, I would actually, if I was watching, I would go grab them and I'd start building something. I mean, it's like I, yeah. I'd have a hard time not playing with Legos if they were put in front of me. So that's how I feel about Legos. For Christmas, I think, a couple of years ago, two, three years ago, there was a 917 slash 919 set, uh -huh. I think. The little cars, right? And I, I slapped that together. There was a pit road and everything, so I I put that together, and it's sitting up on a shelf in my son's room. So that was, that was fun. Uh, so the next question is, how do you feel about Forza Horizon Four? Um, eh. <laughs> <laughs> So then imagine this, if you take Legos, the speed champion Legos, and then mash it together with Forza Horizon 4, does it make you want to play Forza Horizon 4 even more? Um, well, not even more, just does it make you want to play it? Okay, I, I honestly, more than I did if it didn't have Lego. <laughs> Like, like, okay, like, I'm going to E3 right now. Now, this scenario didn't play out, but let's just say that I walked up to the booth and I was obligated to play, right? I can't walk away. Um, and there's console A that has Forza Horizon 4 and console B that has Forza Horizon 4 with Legos. I'm going to play with, one with Legos. There you go. <laughs> well, it got announced the other day, and I think half of the internet that's into cars collectively lost their shit it broke the internet um, <laughs> <laughs> i i don't care i i actually think it's kind of cute you know whatever i i'm not gonna buy it so uh people some people were fairly upset by this and i'm not really sure why but i mean it's it's kind of cool i mean look at the little f40 in there i i'm watching the video I mean, and it's you, like, look you got you got lego runways and stuff and and tracks i don't know i i'm not gonna buy it but it, it's forza horizon 4 i mean it's kind of not serious to begin with right i i <laughs> it's not like they put it in a forza motor 7 pro or, or which this might actually improve the game or Project Cars 2 or iRacing or something like it's in or it's a Horizon 4. So I, I just thought, I think it's kind of cool. I don't mind something like this. It breaks it up. The, it's been out for what? Nine, ten months, whatever it's been. God, I just I, played I, their it, whole it, trailer. It, I hope I didn't kill our show. Uh, whoops. <laughs> So anyway, I, I just thought it was funny, and I thought it was uh, – I'm not trying to stick people. I did think it was a, a bit humorous that some people were kind of like, this is terrible. Like, okay, if you don't like it, you don't have to get it. Um, I don't remember outrage when the Hot Wheels pack came in. I think that was for I, Forza. Yeah, I mean – it was. I don't think it was quite as strong, and it may be just a thing where. See, I don't. Well, I don't care. Maybe it wasn't an oversaturation of the Lego 
because Lego is in everything now. I mean, right. remember back in the day when it was it was the first franchise to do the Lego video game. I can't even remember now, but I remember when that was a thing. You had like right. Batman and all, you know, all that. So maybe it's just an oversaturation of the Lego stuff. Maybe that's the problem. I right. just, again, I don't really care. So it doesn't affect me one way or the other. I just, I, I actually, when I was watching, I was like, oh, look, you know, they've got some layouts with little Legos and they're breaking the bricks and, oh, you can drive the actual regular cars in there and break the bricks off as well. Well, that's kind of cool. Well, and I'm looking at the the picture of the F40, F40, like what looks like Le Mans almost. Uh or at least Lego Le Mans. Um, right. And uh, that's just kind of awesome. I mean, how it's fun would it cute. be to be the guy, you know, you, all of a sudden the guy in the Lego version of it. I, I think it's funny as hell. Um, you know, in my day, Legos were just squares and rectangles. <laughs> we had to use our imagination. <laughs> See my house? Um, <laughs> I built a castle. <laughs> Anyway, I, I think it's funny. You know, I can understand where uh, maybe it wasn't so much outrage as people are just like, well, whatever, why, who cares? You know, or... Oh, well, well, yeah, I mean, I get it. I just, yeah. I want to, I actually do want to drive it. The, the, the It's the tracks that actually look most entertaining. And then that's where yes. it's like, well, come on, now it's going to be cool whether you pick a Lego car or a real car. The way they breaking scaled, all the bricks off and like the trees and stuff. Yeah. yeah, and they scaled the real cars, which is actually kind of looks cool when I'm looking at it next to the regular car and the way they scaled them together. It's right. like, uh, what's that photography where they make things look miniature? I know photography? what you're saying. I don't know the actual what the name is for it. Shift or some, split shift or uh, something. I can't remember, but I always like I can look at those photos forever like i just trip out on them i'm like whoa where am i you know anyway it's kind of like that I, I anyway i think it's cool i would i would play it like i said if it was a and b i'm going b you know there you go so that's some of the e3 announcements you know i've been watching e3 i actually watch e3 every year i don't just play you know i don't everybody should know by now i just don't do racing games i do i play video games as well in fact i just finished up uh Call of Cthulhu, Cthulhu and uh, this weird kind of indie game. Uh, what is it called? Days to Escape? Four, four? Don't Escape Four? I don't know. It's something like that. But I, I, so I watch. And, you know, the racing games often don't, you know, don't hit anything. They don't do anything like everybody kind of makes fun of them. Like if you're watching a live show, every makes everybody makes fun of the racing games in the regular chat and stuff like that. But I watch it because I like other stuff. But you have been at E3 because, like you said earlier, you're working the WRC eight. Well, the Big Ben booth with WRC eight and VRX. So what have you what can you tell us at least about WRC eight? And then have you gotten to see anything else? Um, yes, I plan this so well. So <laughs> <laughs> this was going to be, I say this every year. I think every year on the show, I say, I'm not going to go to E3 again. I'm just, it's just well, like, I remember last year we had a conversation cause I worked E3 last year for Thrustmaster in the, uh, the, uh, set of course, Confidencione booth. And you were like, I'm never doing this again. And you were just there, you know, on the floor wandering around. Yeah, I can come and go as I pleased. And it was like, I don't want to be here. Um, it's just, I, it's, it's a really busy show. I mean, like, this is a huge trade show. There's so many people. Yeah, and it's, it's just, it's, it's really long hours. It's, it's. And it's packed. I oh, mean, there's, yeah. there, you can't, if you've never been, you can't imagine where all the booths are and the just the proximity between each other they do a pretty good job of actually keeping the noise level down at a reasonable level because yes. now they like last year they went and checked everybody with the you know the db level and was yeah. like hey you can't be above this so that made it manageable but i'm telling you i've never seen anything like last year when i was working i've never seen any we were right next to the Fortnite booth oh yeah that's right resident evil 2 
uh, display, this huge like thing for Resident Evil 2 remake was like catty corner to me. And I'm just like, wow. And then you went through like the Ubisoft booth and then Nintendo has its own gigantic section and Sony had its own gigantic. It was like, holy cow, you can't believe how big. Yeah, like cities built within is. a building. I mean, literally, it's I'm just amazing. like, yeah. And it, it it's just, it's it's a <clears> spectacle <throat> and a half. And it's, like you said, the noise is minimal, but then like like the Fortnite, for example, I remember when it, near your booth last year, but it was like, it'd be fine, it'd be fine. And then they'd like, just out of nowhere, just bah, 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 you know, and it's like, yeah, oh, music, and it's yeah, just, yeah. doing a dance contest. And it just, it's a little maddening. Um, I just imagine having to stand there all day and listen to it. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I was in a pretty quiet spot. Um, we might have been the loudest thing around. In fact, I know we were. I couldn't hear anything Okay. Else. Um, <clears throat> it's been a real trip. Um, again, it's a long, rough, hard show. I, when I got hired to do this one, I told them, well, hey, I can't work E3. I cover E3. So, I only need a few hours because I knew there was just a really small amount of sim racing stuff this year. Like, it's always small. I knew this year right. it was like a third of normal small. You know, it's like I knew there'd mm -hmm. be nothing Gran Turismo. There's going to be nothing Forza. There's going to be, you know, nothing. Yeah, that was an announcement that they did confirm is that there will be no Forza Motorsport this year. Right. And nothing. Just not. And it's like, wow, how can I be at E3 and there is nothing Gran Turismo or Forza. And it's like, I don't expect iRacing to be there, but I've counted right. on Gran Turismo and Forza in some way, shape, or form to be there for 10, 12 years. Um, and then and then with that, a lot of others. So I'm with Big Ben, who represents, funny enough, uh, WRC8, TT Isle of Man. Or, uh, oh, yeah. And then know, all the trucks. And the, the FIA trucks. trucks. Huh? And then they have this other one. Oh, what was it called? It was like a spin tires, but like simplified. Like, uh, 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 really? Yeah, kind of like a trials ish, moto, rock crawling ish. Oh, I remember that. Um, I actually saw, I remember seeing a thing for that. I don't, I can't remember what it's called, but I, re I actually remember what you're talking about now. Yes. And the reason I can't it's remember actually what it's a called. rock. It's actually a rock crawling. Yeah. And it and Deal, it's yeah. and it's cool. I mean, it's not as complex as spin tires. Like you can just okay. see that it's not just watching it, but it looks fun. Um, I, and I can't remember what it's called because it's not playable. So of all the content which you could play, just about everything, this uh, one is okay. just running a demo reel. Um, and then they also actually make that Tour de France game, um, but they didn't oh, have really? that there. Okay. But I'm getting a copy. Um, I told him, I'm like, I'm not going to yeah. review it on the show, I don't think. Cause, but he's like, oh, yeah, no problem. So I'll nice. get a copy of that. Um, so, yeah, we had the market share of sim racing because Wreckfest had presents. But, oh, it was so oh, I feel so bad, man. And this is why we have no share. So they are by THQ Nordic is their yes. distributor, yep. which makes some big time games. like They're like double A. Yeah. They're not quite triple A. They're like double A. Yeah. But Wreckfest, they had like this booth. And it wasn't the most popular booth there, right? Mm -hmm. But those tend to get pushed off. You're kind of on the outskirts where when you first walk on the showroom floor, like the big guys have right. that main center area. Which this year was a little different because without the two big boys there, it kind of. And... Oh, okay. How did I not see EA yet? How did I not see EA? I don't know, because EA last year was when you walked in, like EA was on, or Activision was on the left, Ubisoft was kind of on the right, and EA might have been, you know why? Because EA did their own thing. It was EA Plays, and that was at the beginning in another place. That's they, why. So they weren't there either? Well, this technically, the... yes, but they weren't on the showroom floor because they had right. their own thing kind of like microsoft does right but it means that if you went to e3 and you've gone you know normally you would just have to go to that other building. area and it's live during the yeah. same hours mm -hmm. okay i need i don't know if i'll be able to get over there um anyway i got a chance to walk around that's why it was like kind of weird because i'm accustomed to 
uh, EA booth in the main building that is, again, the size of a city block. <laughs> Next to Microsoft with another city block. And then Sony City. Um, and those were not there. I mean, and that is, square footage-wise, those three alone are, I don't know, half of a full auditorium i mean a whole auditorium i, I mean, don't know no, man. That, a that sony hall? one we went to when you came yeah we were walking around that sony one last year was ridiculous yeah they had they were all pumped up for spider-man and it was huge that whole spider-man area that was it was like dumb. half of the north hall yeah, <laughs> like almost crazy. you know so that's interesting that those so without those being there does it feel less empty or does it feel empty yeah uh, Yes and no. It feels smaller okay. because when you get to the outer rims of each room, the like mm -hmm. that walkway at the end is like now Wire. like three aisles wide. Sure. Um, and then they have like you know a video game museum like <clears throat> spread out over like this ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's like that that company did not pay for that space because that's the kind of space that a big player would pay for. And that's the like video gaming museum, which is nothing, you know, it was right. like, it was just, Hey, can you fill that whole area over there with some video gaming okay. stuff? Um, but. So what did you see? Um, I did. A, so that was the other thing. It is so packed that anything worthy of touching had a line all the way around the building. I mean, like, just two and I was here. I was asking people, oh, so how long did you wait at Nintendo to, oh, Nintendo's, to, to play wow. the new, like, Pokemon thing, right? They have the something versus something. Yeah. I have an image of it. Um, <laughs> I hear my dog, my brother even yelling at the dog. Um, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours to wait in line to play. And so last year, Nintendo had a problem because I was talking to some of their people. And last year, Nintendo had a problem where they weren't really limiting how long people were playing. So this line's around their building and it's two and a half lo hours long because they had no oh. control. So this year, they put a really, really short demo on it. And the line was still two and a half hours long. But then when you waited for two and a half hours, you got like two and a half minutes. It's like, are you kidding me? Um, that's rough. The biggest theme of this year's E3, it was such a weird E3. Um, it's like diorama photos. This is like, and John Hill came with me to, for today when we went around the whole place. I spent about three hours going around the whole place. Yeah, it was a little bit like that last year. And like, people are waiting in ridiculously long lines to take a picture with Moss at the Oculus thing or to take a picture, you know. <laughs> It was, it, it was really weird. I mean, and the amount of money they spent on these elaborate take of photos were like Disneyland quality, you know? So that moss mm -hmm. thing was amazing, but who cares? But there was a line of people like an hour long to do that photo. So how long were the lines at your booth? That's the most interesting thing of all. So we had a ridiculously long demo. It was like... It was a, a rally stage from one of the new rallies in WRC8 uh, okay. uh, in, I think it was Spain. God, my memory's mush. Forgive me. I'll do a more detailed piece, but, you know, you guys are getting a little bit of a sneaky. Portugal? Maybe I don't it was know. Port I don't remember. Chile. It was Chile. Okay, Chile. Um, and it could be done in four minutes by, like, you or me or somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, on average, it was seven minutes. I was gonna say, was it about eight minutes? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was over seven. Like, like a handful of people broke the seven minute mark. There were a couple who came in and ran some like four twenties, some four forty fives. John Hill ran a four forty five, which just came in and did it. I, on my first shot, ran a four oh seven. I actually only ran it once because it was we were busy. It's hard for me to jump on the thing other mm -hmm. than they get it i did a, a, a couple of drives testing it but it wasn't like full stages so when i did my one full stage just to see what right. i could do it was a 407 um and reed who i'm working with ran a 406 so he did better than me anyway um it was our line that was the question we had a little teeny queue 
Maybe it would hold 10 or 12 people. And at seven minutes, that's like an hour and 14. Right. We were running uh, into the same thing when with the ACC booth last year. Is that, you know, I think it was three laps or something like that. So, well, around spa. Yeah. Oh my. So that's like nine minutes, right? More than that. Like it was like 12. a 10 minute demo, 10 to 12 minute demo. So, yeah. And so at various times, certain people would wait and then they'd give up and walk. They'd realize because they're counting people, seeing how long this guy's driving, and then they'd just disappear. Other right. guys were just like flopping on the floor. <laughs> like there's like a, a yeah. line of people like laying on the ground. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> um, a pillow and a blankie. So I thought it was kind of funny because we had the shortest, longest line there. You know, the diorama one hour line was like a hundred people, you know, a hundred people in an hour. Sure. No problem. Walk in, smile, take your photo. Here's your photo. Bye. Um, yeah. Versus our 10 man queue was an hour long. So, um, but it meant most of the people who did it really, really wanted to do it. Um, so we had a, a pretty good ratio of people who kind of knew what they were doing, like had a clue well, about good. racing. Um, they weren't just joy riding, so to speak, um, which was good. So what did you, impressions of WRC eight, even though it's an early build. Okay. And out right on it in the corner, work in progress. Right. Um, right. Graphically, really amazing. I mean, oh, okay. really, really good. Um, when you're on like the dirt stages, there'd be times where there'd be like a really good rut, like right where it would be, like on the mountain edge, you know, where the mm -hmm. runoff would be. And it's like, man, I've been on those kind of dirt roads and there is a rut, you know, and just a perfect V that Mother Nature has created going along the edge of that road, you know. And they did things like that really well. And, you know, when you do rallies, I think one of the challenges these companies run into, you know, is like how far are they going to let you drive off the course before reset, you know, and sure. how much terrain are they really going to model? So mm -hmm. that I find they – all of these are played by artificial walls to kind of create boundaries so right. they don't have to put you in that scenario. And I thought they did a really good draw because sometimes those are the things that kill – rally stages for me because the terrain just doesn't look right and it's usually when they're trying to do that like when they're giving you more open terrain it always looks right it's those moments where they're trying to restrict you that it starts looking very tight um so i thought they did a great job the graphics just really good really really good um the gameplay seems good but the the force feedback wheel sync to the game was just not where it needs to be but the game doesn't come out till september i you know we are seeing that this that's is... what last year's title struggled with was in my opinion the force feedback was pretty lacking i actually liked seven but right the, the force feedback was not not good um a ton of regions um per region like three or four tracks flipped versions of each one okay uh typical short length so six to ten miles ish you know not long um or not super you know well three minutes those are decent I mean, length four yeah, those, I mean, four to eight minutes yeah. you know um but a good amount of regions a good amount of cars but you're now like you know some of the other licensed titles but you have a very restricted amount of content because it's a licensed WRC 8 title. Um, also, they weren't showing everything, so I don't know if there's other groups right. or other things in it yet, um, or if they had, like, junior career. And I saw a button for, like, career mode, but I don't know what it meant because all we really had was quick play. Um, the sounds are pretty good. The co-driver, it was hard to tell because... I've always had a hard time with co-drivers in rally racing. Like, sometimes I feel like I'm a corner ahead or a corner behind him when right. he's it's starting. Really, <laughs> it's usually pretty tough to get the right, <laughs> the right setting because then as your skills get better, but then you go to the next rally and you might not be as good as that at that rally. So then you're kind of, you're too far behind. And yeah, it, it's a, 
so you would hope that it, it does it at the same pace, but sometimes it doesn't seem to do that. And so I did, I wasn't sure, but I'm like, oh, he's not helping. But I was just listening for him saying one or two or, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, right angle or, um, and so I knew the corners that I had to really be in trouble. Um, I found it really hard to stay on the track because I was having a little trouble with the force feedback watching the crowd they were having a really hard time but it's a rally game like like it was funny watching the crowd come up thinking that oh it's rally it should be easy and it's like well i don't know if it should be easy i mean it's a narrow road it's it's slippery terrain you're in a wonderful car but it is a beast of a car so you need to have a little bit of self-control first you know self-control is going to happen along before car control you know <laughs> so and and they're you know they're just like you know and i was telling people i'm like all right so listen for your guy you know your your your, your co-driver and he's going to give you pace notes and listen for that one or two because that's your warning you better be watching that brake pedal you know and I'm like, and if you can't hear him, which I totally understand, it's flashing it above. And then yet the same thing, and this is the hardest thing about working trade shows, regardless of the software. <laughs> yes. Just watching people like not know, know how to drive a car. Like, well, and I always was trying to get last year, like I was trying to get him, hey, this is not as easy as you think it is because you're looking at a 2D plane and you start getting focused on the thing that's at the very front, which is usually the nose or the dash. Right. And I would point to the screen. You got to look out here. Right. This is the spot you need to look. Don't look here. Uh, that's a because great tip. In inevitably, people look right, literally focus right at the bottom of the screen. Right. Because that's where their eye they're not used to interpreting a, a 3D image on a 2D plane. So right. it's, it's, that's what I did last time. I mean, last year I was just like up here, not down there. Oh, um, and it's funny because it doesn't matter what sim you talk about in this case, you know, and, and no, it's like, all then. Yeah. When I do, same. when I do driver train, when I work for CXE at trade shows, so funny working for like, different companies but it's like it's awesome for me because i love all of them for different reasons you know so it's very easy for me to go there and and be with a vrx sim on a d-box setup and talk about wrc8 you know because it's like hey you know what that's a great game and even though i'm like hey the force feedback still needs i'm like yeah but they're still months away and we've seen that for some reason like i think the devs just put enough in it so that the guys can run it to be checking graphics because you know the complex issues of the game unfortunately are not the force feedback necessarily it's mm -hmm. graphics sure. and the interface and does it all work without crashing and you don't mm -hmm. need to drive it with a really fancy wheel setup to check those things out and in fact it might even be better suited to not have that because if you're going to be testing for things going wrong it's probably better to be flipping and crashing and hitting walls than to drive the perfect stage where you might not find where all the problems with the game are, you know, that's a, good, that's, that's a way to look at it. Yeah. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to give them a pass on that for sure. Um, but watching people, okay. it doesn't matter what sim, like it could be iRacing with a CXC sim. It could be a set of course. They just, and so when I do my driver training, I literally look at people and most of, you know, trade shows usually have a minimum age of 18, you know, they're not mm -hmm. for, and so I'm looking at, them, I'm like, you're here. I know you know how to drive. You're physically here. You got yourself here. I know you know how to drive. If you take those skills <laughs> right there, three feet know, away. <laughs> I might be asking a lot. <laughs> um, so uh, you would ask, what else did I see? Um, THQ anything Nordic. Else? I was going to say anything else sim related. Yeah, you were ta you were starting to talk about Wreckfest. Yeah, so Wreckfest had two different things going on. Number one, Legion. Had you have you heard this word in computers or whatever? So I didn't know Legion. I'm like Legion. That's weird. I haven't heard of that. That sounds like the Legion, kind of game I'd hear about, but it didn't. Well, look the like only thing I heard about Legion was that. They're calling something that the Lenovo. Oh. It's the Lenovo computer line is now called oh, Legion. Okay, and and so I it took me forever to figure out what the booth was. That's why I was putting it that way. It's like I'm right next to this booth, and I'm like, they have Wreckfest and an R seat, um, with a Thrustmaster wheel, 
and then they had some other games over there and i was like but i'd never heard of them as a developer because it kind of looked like a developer booth because sometimes developers okay. well you know like even the the big ben booth you know six or seven different games throughout their booth and it kind of looked like one of those kind of setups but it was like oh oh wait that's lenovo and that's the name of their new line of computer okay i get it and uh and i think it's like their gaming computers essentially so um they had a thing a rec fest doing demo derby and they were giving away a prize to whoever could score the most points each day uh, i don't okay. know what the prize was i just saw what they're doing um and i hooked them up because i the thrustmaster rep came by our you know what guy uh julian do you know julian okay uh -huh. so julian came by and so we're talking and he's like oh i'm just seeing if anybody needs anything because you know they're just making sure if some sim company is there and they're not using thrustmaster they're going to give them an opportunity to use some thrustmaster equipment and he's like, oh, cool. So we had a, uh, a TSXW on our rig. And he's like, cool, cool. And he's like, hey, do you know anybody? And I'm like, oh, right over there. And they had Wreckfest at the Legion booth, but they were using, like, the, the, the crappy Ferrari wheel, you know, with two pedals. And it was just like, eh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The spider or whatever that is. Yeah. and I was Four or five, I don't know. It was something like that. And I was just like, oh, you got – that wheel's got to go. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> anyway, the next morning I came in and they're unboxing an XW. And I'm like, hey, okay. guys, just so you know, uh, I told Julian to come over and say hi. And they're like, oh, thank you so much. That wheel they had, they had a wheel break. And they had to, like, run to a Fry's or a Best Buy, like, in the middle of the night. And that was oh, the only wow. wheel they could find in town that they could physically buy, pick up, and bring in. Oh and no! So anyway, that worked out cool. That was kind of fun. Uh, Anything else? Um, Racing related. Wreckfest. So here was the sad thing. So T THQ Nordic's booth getting moderate attention, people playing everywhere, and then there's like ten stations playing Wreckfest, and no one there. No one. No one's playing Wreckfest. Oh no! And I'm just like, oh, that's so sad, you know. And I go over to the guy, one of the guys in the booth, and I'm like, hey, do you know anything about Wreckfest? He's like, oh, no, I don't really know anything about it. He's like, well, that guy kind of does. And I go over to that guy, and I talk to him, and I'm like, hey, are any of the people from Wreckfest here? And he's like, no, they're not here. And I start talking to him about the game, and it's immediately obvious to me that he has n never played no it. No clue. No, no yeah. clue whatsoever. And it was like, ah. Oh. So I ended up just giving him my card, and I've been like, I've been trying to get a hold of these guys, you know, and... I think I said enough about it that he understood I knew what I was talking about. And hopefully my business card looks legit enough that I'm not just another idiot right. at E3. So we'll see if anything ever comes of it. I really, I'm not, I, I'm not banking on that, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, what did I see? I didn't go play much of anything because I just couldn't stand the idea of waiting in a long line right. to do it. And I had limited time. And then I went to the next level racing booth. I was going to ask, did you get to go to the, see next level next level man these guys are on fire um you know when next level first came on the market i was like yeah they're kind of cheap the finish wasn't very good they kind of scratched easily and you know but they're affordable and okay and then they just kind of kept getting better and better you know they're not even a sponsor of the show or anything this isn't even kind of paid promotion but it's like they've done a really good job of evolving that company and then they built that I would agree with that, yes. platform. And so, I, you know, Hess is the owner. And, I mean, I only know him from meeting him at E3. But he's a really nice guy. And they're really serious. And, you know, they keep coming to E3 all the way from Australia. It's like PlaySeat doesn't even go to E3 anymore. So PlaySeat has no problem taking money from the industry. But they're not going to go show up at E3. Anyway, I don't think that's a very fair statement. But anyway, Next Level does it. And, and I'm... That was the theme for me was, that, wow, there's no sim racing at this show. So that's why I'm applauding Next Level. It's like, well, there's no sim racing at this show. Um, so they have a lineup of new stuff coming out. And I was like, whoa, no nice. way, no way. Nice. So they are doing, do you know the Play Seat Challenge? Yes. The Play Seat Challenge, honestly, is one of my all-time favorite rigs. And, like, I mean, I owned one, and I I think it's in storage right now but it's like for what it is it is the perfect rig you know if you wanted a fold-up lawn chair rig yes. mm -hmm. it's it's perfect i mean if you lived in new york or san francisco or it's you know a 500 small apartment foot, yeah this might be your only option 
Um, and I, and they do it. So Next Level built like a rig equivalent. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's got a pedal thing, and it can go Formula One or GT style in total like Next Level um, style. And it's like, wow, that is, you know, kind of flimsy, like a play seat challenge or a lawn chair. But, like, if you lived in an apartment and you needed it to be a little more serious than a play seat challenge, this was it. <laughs> it was like, wow, that's really amazing. Okay. It's really super light. It's, it's like, I think it's under $300, so it's not expensive. Um, Good starter one. Highly adjustable. They have a new super inexpensive wheel stand coming out at like 119, which is pretty cheap to get. Like oh, that's not bad. Yeah, for your like Xbox, PlayStation. I call them couch, couch stands. Yes. You know. Yep. Um, then they had a another economy rig, and it was like, wow, you know, most company and th- and this is where I have to applaud them again. Most companies seem to get into our market, get a foothold. hold. And then slowly abandon the low end market and start concentrating on the next tier, the next tier, the next tier, mm-hmm. and and maybe more so from the rig <clears throat> companies than the like wheel guys. But even in the wheel guys, we kind of see it too. But um, it's like, man, they have this like great lineup, and now they're like, cool, we're gonna do even more economy stuff. So it's like a another three hundred dollars totally stable rig continuing their modular design and buying a stand and then building it to a rig if you wanted or the more serious rig to begin with. And that was all awesome. And then they had their new traction loss thing. So, uh Oh, I don't know if many people remember. I think there was like one story out of ADAC from Sim Expo. I think there was only like one story that even came out of the whole thing, but they had it there, but no, like, I don't know how the whole world missed it, essentially. Um, their whole rig slides right. both direct, you know, the front and back. I mean, so Whoa. I've seen tra- traction loss. It's just the rear end moving. Yes. This is both, which if you remember, Whoa. that's how the McLaren sim is. I mean, a gigantic version in the case of the McLaren wow, sim. Wow, I can't imagine. That sounds really cool. So it can go full left. The whole thing can move left and right. Right. Or it can spin it. Or it can shove the front end or, oh, that's very interesting. (laughs) It is very interesting. So on a very, I did two demo rides because there was a line and, you know, and and you know this too, but sometimes Mm -hmm. when I do go to a sim racing booth in the trade show, there could be a one hour line of people and I get, taken the front of the line and i i have to i'm still to this day i feel guilt ridden when this happens because i'm like such a dick move you know but <laughs> and it's not even me doing it it's the you know it's like well next level yeah. is gonna stop letting the e3 people come in so that i can mm-hmm. because which makes sense i just man i'm a nice yeah, guy we had we did the same <laughs> thing for press people is what happened is the, one of the guys would grab a press person and all of a sudden hold on and the press yeah. person would get up in there and try it I don't like it, but at the same time, I don't have time to wait in the line either, right? But right. So anyway, um, I did two runs, and then I but then I'm like, I gotta, I can't just be here as long as I'd want to be here either under those circumstances. Um, it had the motion sim chair on top of it, so it was the the uh, the GT rig just like mm-hmm. I have right here, with the motion seat on top of it, on top of the traction loss. Wow. And they had it in shock and awe mode, you know, because we're at the trade oh. show. <laughs> <laughs> so let's oh just boy. let's just Don't throw me. you out of the chair kind of. Right, uh, jostle your insides. Um, so, but that meant that it, the, so as cool as it was, like, I could see how you would feel certain things that I wasn't getting because the chair was moving me so much that I missed the left shunt, let's call it, from Wreckfest terminology. But when the car, all four wheels moving together, the chair would kick so hard that I didn't feel that movement at all. But I'm quite certain that if the chair hadn't kicked that hard, I would have felt that movement because it's a lot. It's like six inches, (laughs) you know? It's It's a lot of movement. Um, kind of jealous. And then 
when you and and I was talking to the guys and they're like, oh, and you get a really good over uh, uh, understeer effect, like on wheel lock up entry, and I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't get that either, because well, under braking, the seat chair, especially at like two and a half or whatever they had it set at, right, is really gonna throw you kicks. Now, with all that said, coming off the corner with throttle oversteer. Oh, you're gonna make me. <laughs> uh. It just like wow, it slid, and I'm like, it slid. It was really, really cool. Um, but I'm Damn still. It. But now again, I say it all the time: placebo, placebo, placebo. Right. I had four minutes in the middle of yeah, all. Yeah, you didn't get th- in depth time with it. No, no. So I, I'm not. But it, it was really cool. I'm <laughs> that I can say for sure. It was really cool. Um. So yeah, it it was an epic. Uh, it was. It, I've had fun. I've had fun for sure. Nice. Well, yeah, that sounds. It does sound like fun. Actually, I I wasn't too jealous. I mean, I was a little jealous of the WRC eight, and then you went and told me about the freaking whole, not just rear traction loss, the whole chassis traction loss, and now I'm really jealous that I'm not there. Yeah. It, Damn it. it. And it sounds cool. And it's cool to watch. So. I have some footage of it. I'll, everything we talked about, I'll do a little more in depth at some point. Okay. Again, this is kind of a, like a teaser, and you know, I don't mind sharing you guys with you Sounds guys the, the experience. And then I've met a bunch of sim racers, like some. Oh yeah, who, I was going to ask you. Some who knew who I was, knew the show, and fans of the show. That was really cool, really flattering for me. Nice. Um, and then some people who didn't, but just wanted to talk sim racing. So and 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 I don't go out of my way to be like, oh, you should watch my show or. I just talk like, you know, just, you know, and it's like, Hey, yeah, let's talk simmer just like we're doing, you know? And, and it's really fun having those conversations with people who are all over the spectrum of, of, of sim knowledge or, or even level like of how seriously they, they play or drive or understand it. And it's, and it's really cool having those conversations. I mean, I can do that all day long and entertain myself. So when some people might be bored, because I mean, what's my job at this show in particular? I mean, my job's always different. Like, I, you know, with CXC, I usually do driver training, which is intense. Um, when I'm with VRX, uh, well, actually, I usually do like VIP tours and things like that on like the. Okay. But on this one, I was like literally just ride operator, you know, and mm-hmm. um, which a lot of people would be bored. I mean, because you're sitting in a chair and you're like. Next, all right, press this, do that, tit, 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 you know, same 12 words you got to tell them every time. Press go, have fun, right? And then you kind of keep half an eye on them because if they're doing something horrible, you you might run over and help them out. Um, for me, <laughs> I have to entertain that line of an hour yep. people. And so I'm walking up, and I'm like, you ever driven a rally car before? Uh, I, I, you know, in a sim. I'm not trying to act like, you know. And I'm like, all right. And I, and so I engage them, and I try to bait them into this conversation. And then I get to have a seven-minute conversation, essentially. Or sometimes I'll walk them down the line. And, it, yeah, it's just fun. I mean, I like doing that. It's like I, there's a side yeah. of me that's like I was kind of built to do that. Like I'm not a really showy person. But in that world it's fun for me to really be engaging whereas like i could go to the supermarket and not say a single word to a single person that is that is me to a the absolute <laughs> t like i went and did the announcing and have basically was kind of the right operator for uh the acc deal last year and i you know, I'm trying to explain, I'm trying to coach, I'm trying to entertain the people that are waiting in line and having conversations like that. That's, I enjoy doing that kind of stuff, but same thing. If I'm at the supermarket, I don't say one word to anybody, which sounds weird. Cause I play in a band, but people, I, I just, we choose I, our I'm moments. That, yeah. I'm not that outgoing right. outside of my comfort zone. I am not outgoing at all, <laughs> which is sort of funny. I mean, but but see, anybody who does know me, who gets to know meet me, would never believe that still because the moment right. that they meet me, I'm already in that world. Of, hey, we're already friends because we sim race. 
So we already have that bond. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you a fist bump and we're going to talk racing and we're going to smile and laugh and have a great time. So they'd still be like, I don't understand what Sean's talking about. I met him and he's totally just like he is when he's, you know, on the show. But then if you ran into me or just observed me in real life, the Sean character, he doesn't like to talk to others. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Yeah, I can absolutely relate. Oh, I should have used that as my James. Man, I blew an opportunity. James, you're an Australian now. (laughs) So E3 sounds... Well, you still got one one more day. One more day. Tomorrow's going to be super brutal um, because I'm exhaustion level maximum. Um, The saving grace of the show, no BS, they did, uh, and they did this last year, you know, uh, they do the lunch trucks. So all of the cool lunch trucks from L.A. because lunch trucks in L.A. is a big mm-hmm. thing. You know, yep. like the roach coach. When I was young and working in the world where you'd eat yeah, off we one call of them roach coaches. Yeah. yeah, and no longer. Now these are like gourmet restaurants on wheels, right? And it's like super competitive. So And they're all like wrapped, custom wrapped, mm-hmm. you know, beautiful, beautiful rigs. And that's part of it too. And so like, yeah, they had like 20 of the lunch trucks uh uh just lined up in the midway and so it was like pick like and just great food smell and yeah a little pricey because you're in this environment so i had a 12 dollar right. burger you know but it was the best burger i've had in a while and i'm eating it at e3 at a trade show you know and i'm like well at disneyland this would be 20 dollars, and it would taste like my shoe you know <laughs> so Perfect. <laughs> or if it was at well, the new Star Wars thing at Disneyland, it would taste like blue, right? Not my shoe, well, but just wow. blue. Just blue. Blue. Perfect. <laughs> so that's E3. That's my, my mini E3 re- recap. Probably more than I'll talk about on certain things because um, it's just hard for people to understand, I think, the magnitude of these booths. Like, it's, it's, it's impressive. It's like going to Disneyland. It's like going mm-hmm. to Universal Studios. It's... Not like Comic Con, although I can see the gamers. I've never been to one of those, so I wouldn't. I'm not. I don't know. The gamer people are really trying to get the cosplay at E3 thing going. Um. Okay, I got one more thing from E3. Uh oh. And I mean no disrespect. Uh oh. I are you? Are you? Uh. Did you hear? Were you in the bathroom at the same time? No, I saw him though. They walked by our booth, and like I've watched this guy, and I'm not, I'm not a fan of people who are so blatantly just trying to be like a bad dude. You know, I'm a fucking dick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, mean, I think that's a bit of his character. Like he, he, he. That's a full-on persona right. that he's using. Oh. I- and it's like you, you dyed hair, sunglasses. It, right. It, sure, sure. I get it. But like. Dr. Disrespect is who we're talking about. Y- yeah. So I I did. I, I don't do like that. It, I don't. There's nothing for me in that bit. Like I get that okay. that's a bit. There's yep. nothing to it for me. Like whatever. Um, he and his entourage walked by. And so I've never seen him in real life. I've seen him on Twitch. Right. And. I saw him the minute they came into frame because I was like, what the, f- what is this? <laughs> Cause it wasn't just him. Like the whole, everybody in his crew was a whack job <laughs> and they walked by and I was like, Oh my God, whatever. And, and I could tell that their whole attitude was they were going to go through E3 and just trash everything there. Like it was obvious. Like I didn't, I didn't need to read any story. I'm like, Oh, I see what they're up to. Like you can just tell, like, look at him, you know? Um, anyway, yeah, he, the, the whole band thing. Like I, I heard about, like, this was the story of E3, like on the, on the floor, just like murmurs around. And it was like, did you yeah, he hear? Was trying, he was trying to real life, <laughs> you know, stream IRL. So he had somebody following him with the camera. Well, he went to the bathroom and he did this whole deal. Well, the, they followed him in the bathroom, which is actually against the law there's actually a penal code that says in california that you cannot do right. that um let alone that violates twitch's terms of service so yeah they uh 
don't know if it's a permanent ban, but they they did get rid of him from E3 and they did kick him off of Twitch. Like, who knows how long that'll that'll last? But instantly, I mean, like yeah. like minutes later, he's out of there and off the air. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I he, and and like again, the buzz, like people like I, you could see people in line showing people the story on their feeds. You know, it was like, what is going on? And it was like. Dr. Disrespect just got banned. That's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy <laughs> that we're at an age where the information, A, gets to you that fast, and B, you can be that... I, I, I don't know if that's a mistake. Like, I don't know if that's really a mistake, Like, right. or if you just thought you could get away with it, or what. So it's one of those two, and I'm not passing judgment either way. Right. But the fact that you can actually do that, we're at an age where you can actually live stream right. and, and make an oops. I'm just going to say it's an oops. Might not have been an oops. Just like that. An oops. And then not only do you have the technology to do it, it you have the tech to then take it away instantly and boom, you know, Twitch. And, uh, well, and, and think you of it. You could get sued for that. Yeah, what I And I thought everybody thought this was like the end. I'm like, you know what? One of these days, somebody's going to be used to make an example out of, right? Like, at some point, society will stand up for decency and say, hey, you know, there have been obvious rules that we didn't think we needed to go over, but apparently somebody's right. going to have to be fined or jailed. Or And so I was kind of wondering, I'm like, I wonder, wonder if this is all over. When you read those warning labels on things and you just read something that's so blatantly obvious and you had to go – Somebody had to do this right, right. in order for them to put this on the can. Right. It's kind of one of those things. Yeah. So now you're going to have to not because it's in the terms of service, but now it'll yeah. be like a second check mark. You know, did you read the terms of service? Yes. Do you understand that you are not allowed to film in a bathroom? <laughs> you really know the terms of service. Oh, anyway, it was, you know, and then, so again, like you were saying, so he goes in the bathroom and it was right around it, the bathroom that he went into. It was like right outside our thing. It was, it had, oh, to, have wow. been, it had to have been within minutes of when he walked by me. Cause it was the same moment in time ish. So they go into there. Well, Twitch is one of the exhibitors at E3. Yes. So and they got a decent sized booth. Yeah. So this is being streamed. So. I don't know if that, but he's one on the, oh, they're, no. a, they're a logarithm pick. So I don't know if it was literally going live, but it probably was Ooh. because this is their biggest guy. Can you imagine if that was actually on? I uh, think, wow. Well, and I don't know if it was, but can you imagine if it was? <laughs> and I think that might, I think, it, so again, their logarithm goes to their biggest streamers, get the, the live feeds, like the, the upgraded ones. They're going to stream, and he's also streaming E3 live, so they're like, win, win, right? Our biggest streamer streaming E3. We're at uh -huh. E3. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. What? He's in the bathroom, and that's why cut, I think. Cut the feed. 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 Can you imagine all those people, like, having a heart attack? If it was on. I don't. We don't know well, that it was, but, but can you imagine if, like, the people. <laughs> cut the. Cut it. Cut They're, like, having palpitations and everything. <laughs> Can you imagine the blood vessels bursting? What the <laughs> f is this guy doing? It was insane. And, and then again, now imagine that everybody's cell phones is going nuts. It's all happening instantaneously in the building, out to the whole world. So right. and like, it was a really weird moment. So, so, um, and that's why I'm thinking it all happened so fast that it's like, it almost had to have been playing live at their booth because it was like, Bam, bing, bong. You know, it was like, <laughs> you know, just. And that's how Sean describes this moment. <laughs> so that's my E3 story that you'll never hear. Nice. That part will not be in my uh, other, other E3 nice. stories. Well, we got a couple. I did reach out to the community. We've got just a couple quick topics uh, that will do. So I appreciate everybody uh, putting them together and, and submitting them. We, um. Sean's got to go to bed. It's it's now officially past midnight. So, yeah. Uh, first up, Mark asks, so iRacing put out a survey. And I like these surveys because it's interesting to see then how they react to the survey. 
So I remember years ago they had talked, they had asked about AI, they had asked about dirt and stuff, and now we're getting dirt and we're getting some at some point AI. Right. So I just I find these surveys interesting. So they put out another survey asking, you know, a bunch of questions. Um, and there was one section in there that asks, what do you want to add? You know, or what do you and there's another section like what do you watch in real life? I think that's what they said. Uh, what do you participate in? This kind of stuff. Well, Mark asks, how would you feel if iRacing added NHRA drag racing to the service? Wow, that... Ooh. Uh, w awesome. I mean, it didn't take the amount of thought. The delay in answering was me thinking, wow, how detailed they could get. Like, my brain immediately went, oh, are we talking oh, yeah. funny car, drags, top fuel? Are we... Like, I mean, are we talking build? So, but then I came back to the, the problem to me and correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't like building the motor a big part? Engine tuning, you know, engine tuning, the clutch, that kind of stuff would be a big reading the air. You know, that would be have to be more advanced, I think, than it is right now. That would be a whole for, other sim on top of the sim. Racers. I'm not a big drag racing guy. Right. But I think for those folks that are really into drag racing, like those things would have to be in there because I, I believe not only reaction time, you know, cutting a good light staging, that kind of thing. I think that the engine tuning part of it would have to really be strong for it to happen, you know, in a, in a, in a, in i racing, how about that? Right, um, and background. I think it'd be cool though. I there was a game by Bethesda. Yes, uh, IHRA. Bethesda, yep. Yeah, IHRA Motorsport. Mm -hmm. um, I own the first one. I don't think I got the second one, but it wasn't because I didn't thoroughly enjoy the first one. It's that I couldn't learn how to tune. It was hard. It was really hard, and I sucked massively at it. So even though I loved the game, I mean, I actually really loved the game, but I just wasn't very good, and I had no hope, so I never bought two. And the only reason was because of that lack of hope. It wasn't because I wasn't intrigued and didn't love the concept. It just maybe isn't within my wheelhouse. Um, but I loved it, and I thought that the racing was fun. Like, like it wasn't just the... The tune part, which was really cool, I just couldn't do it. But the the taking the tree and going, and not over revving, and the tires. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I, I thought it was making a, sure a you shift at the right points. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I I'd be all for such an idea. I just don't think it's in the cards because I think it's literally a whole other game in order to do that. Because right. it's not just I, like adding a two wheel drive to four wheel drive, or mm -hmm. it's like no, you're talking about an engine that right now is a, a a handful of parameters for the sim versus a whole engine within an engine. I don't yeah, want to I use would, the word engine, but... Uh. <laughs> I just think that it would have to be developed further because we really don't, as far as I know, at least with the sprinkler stuff, like you're not playing with the ADR... Like you're not taking a reading and getting the ADR and then making your adjustments to the to the pills or, uh, you know, doing. I guess you kind of mess with the electronic fuel mapping a little bit, but I don't think it's in as in depth as you could make it. But right. I just know on my end for like the sprint cars, our system is fairly simple. But you're not adjusting like the low speed, the high speed. You're not adjust, you know, changing the pill per, you know whatever altitude you're at or ADR rating, you know, right. however you decide there's a couple different ways people like to use that information to make sure that they're fueling the engine correctly. Right. Um, but that's not in there. So if on a simplest, I mean, the sprint car is relatively simple. And if on a simplistic man manner, in a simplistic manner, if that's not available, I can only imagine what you're, because you're messing with so much horsepower in any of the drag cars, the engine tuning and the clutch settings and, and you know, all that. And again, forgive me, I'm not 
that well versed in drag racing but i would just think it'd have to be fleshed out so much more that it's just not capable of doing that and making people happy yeah they could probably slap it together but i think unfortunately drag racing is even less represented than like the oval dirt oval community. <laughs> right, yeah. i thought the dirt oval community was not represented well in simulators and then the all of a sudden then the trucks come out right the pro the lucas oil trucks and i'm like oh that was even worse what's smaller than a micro niche like, oh my god it's like, that poor guy i mean i would love for them to have an actual i think it'd be really cool for those people to have an actual sim to race so i agree i i would love for it to be an i racing i don't see it in the cards for if they even had a thought about doing it right. for a long time I but totally that brings up the question because the question was in there what would you like to see either series or car Ooh. for them to bring into iRacing um ooh, without any thought that's uh the funny enough i what i do is that like what i do or I'd like to I, the first thing i'd like them to do is take their amount of racing they have and cut it in half so that's in there ah. there is a question do you think i think it's worded in a way that it says like and it's in your email by the way right so it's tied it says uh do you something to the effect of do you think we run too many races or would you like to see us cut down the amount of races that we run yes. or something to that effect but whatever it is i said yes less races because i just it it would be nicer to and they have the data right for them to go in and go well, here's our most popular times for these these classes because they've been running forever right right so these are the time slots we're going to run we're going to run one major time slot in I'm going to say three different time zones right? because right. Australia kind of gets left out in the cold on one. The U.S., like us in the Midwest, I'm just going to say the you know North America is kind of another, and then Europe is kind of in its its own deal. Right. So, And there is crossover. I'm not saying there isn't, but if you can make it so that you can find the most popular times in those and then – adjust accordingly so that you're you're not racing you know you don't have 20 races for the skip barber in a day right which might happen again with the advent of ai so sure it, i just there are some interesting questions in there and i think mark was just kind of playing off of that survey that we got yeah yeah um you know it's so hard for them to do the amount of courses, you know, and they have so much content. So it's like when you yeah. po point a finger at iRacing, like they need more tracks. And it's like, well, how dare you say that? I mean, they have a gazillion tracks, far more than any other sim when it comes to ton. like, yeah. And, and so, but what they don't have is the groupings of certain tracks in the road racing world. So it's this mm -hmm. eclectic list that has no cohesion. So it's like you couldn't right. you couldn't put a Formula One series anything. Yeah, true try to, to do a season. Yeah, right. and yeah. you and you couldn't do an IndyCar series. You couldn't you couldn't do anything in the road racing world. And I I kind of wonder if that's not how they lost the Blanc pain. Like I know Assetto Corsa went and got it too, but did it have mm -hmm. to be an exclusive? Like hey, you aren't gonna do it. They are. Um, uh, it, yeah, I mean, I imagine it did, but yeah. I, I see what you're saying. And and but but it's like, well, you can't really put together a and so I'd like to see some cohesion to the selection of the next track so that give me a road series. But out of full series, you know? yeah. And, I mean the stock cars are basically the only one, you know, the NASCAR stuff yeah. is basically the only one that's an actual full, yeah. full series. And it took them a long time to get to that. Yep. And they the even way, fall so. behind on certain tracks why we see uh -huh. certain updates too. So um, and, 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 and I understand. So as I say that at the same time, it's kind of a, a tough request because it's like, well, which one do we pick? Cause they're all different. You know, if they're to try to fill in the F1 void, it takes time to put those things together. You can't just, nope. Yeah. So, so, and it, and it took years to get NASCAR years, you know, mm -hmm. 
So um, that's one. And then the last one I think I'm going to throw out without giving it much thought. This is really, you know, spontaneous for me. And it's going to sound weird too, but my word for it, I guess, would be more interactivity with the sim. And I guess I've said it in roundabout ways before, but it's like they have so much data within this sim, so much more than any other sim by like a million times because, you know, we all have our accounts, a whole history of everything I've ever done. Right, yep. And and it's like they have so much data. And so I'd like that to be put to better use towards me. And we talk about how iRacing is a little dry, um, you know, and there's there's not that trophies, the, 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 here you win a car. And I don't expect them to do that because they charge for the cars. But, you know, when I, I, the other day I was looking for my certificates or whatever, my awards. Mm-hmm. And it like took me a ridiculous amount of time to find my awards. And I'm thinking these awards should be given to me. Can you imagine if you could have a showroom? Right. With all your cars and then any of your awards in your showroom. Yes. In that virtual showroom, all of your awards yes. are up on like a wall or a trophy case, yes. like all the trophies you won. Like for like each car case. even. Like there's the car and yeah. then there's like its trophies, you know? you know? And it's and I understand that's not what the sim was built upon, but right. it would be I mean, it'd be kind of cool. It, I, I I don't know. I think like to me, because of the way iRacing charges with their subscription and their content, it's a little yes. Different. It's like, well, the more you can do to keep people active is going to sell more content, have more participation, which getting back to topic one, if they had 10 times more people, they don't need to get rid of some of this racing. It's only because they have a lower amount of people than I'd like to see. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that number is kind of creeping up because um, it seems like we're in a little bit of a growth curve in sim racing right now. Um, but I, yeah, I just like all those awards I got, they should have been presented to me upon winning instead of just a little thing getting color to it in a page that's obscurely hidden. And that and like the trophy, the, the, and I, I think it would go a lot like to me, it's like. <clears throat> There will be a a group of people that won't care, and that's right. That's fine, but I think there's a group of people that would also really find it entertaining and engaging. And it's just one more thing that you could say. This is what we do. Um, The game knows when I won. Your spotter is like, "You won, right?" Mm Mm-hmm. Cool graphic. Talk about trophy. How hard? New spotter is really dry. Yes, yes. Wow. <laughs> you guys could have called me. <laughs> they should have called you. Uh, Man, is he dry. Who is it? That's rough. I can't. Is it somebody real? Is it somebody's spotter? I have no idea, but the, the, the OG, like replacing the OG spotter. Right. Not the Jimmy Johnson pack. Not a, okay. Right. The, the default spotter. It's, I mean, it sounds like his puppy got run over and he lost, you know, his, his best friend in a fire or something like this. He's just on your left. I don't get a like, spotter I can't even anymore. Do, I can't even do it justice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, get a spotter sorry, anymore. Just... Um, for the way I stream, I have to turn off the spotter. Um, so I might, oh. I might not even heard the new one now that I think about it. Oh. Yeah, I'm spotterless. Oh. So uh, there's that one. Last topic, uh, real quick. We talked about last week, ACC, you know, brought up a bigger conversation, I feel like, to the gaming industry as a whole. And also how we go about in our, well, how our thought process goes for when we're trying to review or trying to be uh, informational, give people information about said, you know, thing, whether it's just a car, like we're talking about the pro four and the pro two trucks, or if we're talking about F1 2018, like, so it kind of just gave a bigger, because people were so divided, I think it prompted a larger discussion and somebody, you know, we had actually a few people, I, kind of condense this down from a few people's uh, questions just 
how do you compare reviews from early sim racing titles up to now now we have sponsored articles do you um do you feel like there are people that are getting paid that aren't disclosing that so how do you think the landscape has changed from when you started doing i can't i can give it from an outsider's perspective but i right. wasn't doing reviews 10 years ago so we're going to talk about in the span of youtube let's say and when well you guys didn't even start on youtube you guys right. were on something else before that stage six <laughs> there you go uh so how how have you seen it change well this will be the last thing so you can go to bed <laughs> but how have you seen it change and do you feel like people need to be uh, more, it's maybe not a fair statement, but I don't know how to word it, more cautious about the reviews or the promotions per se? I'll put the, that in air quotes. Right. That people do. Um, I think it's all much, much more controlled than it used to be because – the used to be was when they weren't aware of the power of YouTube and things like that yet. You know, okay. it's like, you know, it's like we, the gaming community, we, the computer geeks of the world, understood the power of the internet and YouTube and Facebook and all these things way before the companies and the politicians. I mean, it was like, you know how long it took before USPS actually bought their .com? You know, and it's like okay. they didn't see it coming. You know, the corporate world did not see the Internet as a whole coming or YouTube and these things. So I feel like now that they realize how strong the message is, now they're like, oh, wait, we have to control as much of this as we possibly can. Okay. And I don't think that that has led to a ton of paid reviews. What it's led to is a more minimalistic attitude towards how many reviews there will be period because 10 years ago i didn't even have to make a phone call to get a copy of a piece of software it would show up with mm -hmm. an embargo date i'd have a month to play with it um and it was just like hey have at it you know we want your marketing and 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 so yeah, I, it was so different back then, but I don't think that there's a ton of paid. You know, as far as like, if you know the reviewer, whether it's a Billy Strange and Billy Strange Racing on YouTube or Sean Cole and the Sim Pit on YouTube, you know, if you know their name, chances are it wasn't a paid review because most of those people wouldn't do it. I think you're risking it. too much. Yeah, but when you look at like an IGN and they're like, already talking you know i saw something on wrc like oh the best version of a rally game ever and it's like how can you even already be saying such a thing and i'm not trying to knock wrc it's really cool incredible graphics sure but like how could you possibly be making too huge a statement unless now did they pay you to say that no i don't think that's happening because that might actually even it's certainly unethical it might even be bordering on illegal. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's <laughs> yeah, there's, there's rules now that you have to um, disclose a so, certain. You, you got to disclose that in, in a certain way if you're actually getting paid. Um, but what it does bring about is the clicks. Right. How, how do we how do we how do we sell this so that somebody clicks? Yes. Because that, like, the baiting them into it kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, you don't do that, right? I think there was, there's only been one, one video you could make an argument that I did a clickbaity title. But I don't, I don't feel it was clickbait, but I could see. But I talked about the thing that's in it, you know. And it was when the World of Outlaws <coughs> last year, when they tried iRacing, tried to do the pro series, and I tried the first race and said, "What you know? What a disaster!" Right. It was. So my title was a question, which sometimes questions can be construed yeah. as clickbaity, uh, uh, but yeah. I, you know, that's fine. I I didn't. I don't see it that way. But yeah, none of my other. I don't think you can say any of my other stuff. I'm usually not the first one out. 
I'm usually not making uh, all these questions. Will it, will it sim? You right. know, this kind of stuff. I don't, right. I don't do that kind of stuff. I usually try to be informational in the titles, like let you know what you're in for. Right. And, um, and that's the thing. So, Same here. Like, I can't say that I haven't done it. And there are a couple that I did that were a little more blatant than others. Like, I'm like, when I typed it, I'm like, oh, oh, oh you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Watch the clicks roll in. <laughs> I know my wording lets gives me the out, right? Because I'm smart. So I'm like, yeah, I can, I can just, I can write this one off. But I'm like, yeah, but I know what I'm typing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, so I can't say I haven't, but getting back to like the being certain personality, that's not me. It's just like, that's not my personality. I'm not trying to play games, you know? And I think that that's a kind of thing like a, a, a boy who cried wolf. So like, yes, if, if you're going to be a click baiter, it's a good way to get a reputation and it's yeah. a good way to burn people. Yep. And then how many times are they going to fall for it? And if they think they're falling for it, then they're going to stop doing it. So the few times that I've done it, even though I was laughing, I was actually laughing because I, I kind of suspected that people would know what I was doing too. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're not that clever, Sean, right? We, we see your clickbaity right. question mark, right? We, we, we get what you're doing. But like you, I usually had a reason and a point for doing it that way, and it wasn't to bait you in. Um, and I've certainly never done anything like put an image that would sucker you in. Right. You know, I've never yeah. done that. That's for sure. Um, or like now put yourself on the thumbnail with a white outline. That was a thing. <laughs> I don't, it still might be a thing, but that was a thing right. for a while. Yeah. Uh, questions, questions in the title. That is that is a clickbait thing. Do you kind of take this a different direction, real quick? Do you compare what happened before in a review? So let's say you did a review on a a sim title five years ago. Does that always get a callback as you do other reviews? In other words, as you're reviewing something, do you reference something from the past? Right. And if you do, how does that influence a new review? Yes, I totally do do that. Um, so like looking at, we've talked about Kunos. I'll use them as my example. And I always talk about the lineage of a sim because to me that is important. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we look at Competizione, this is really the third generation or the third attempt at a sim by Kunos. Netcar was a very pure, raw, iRacing-esque type sim and regarded by many as one of the great sims ever um, and really physics-driven. And when they went to Assetto Corsa, some... Not all, and I'm not passing judgment. I'm just using this as an example, but there's some feeling behind it. Um, maybe wasn't as hardcore. Maybe wasn't as purist in that, oh, it has to be icy, impossible driving to be a real sim. Um, the graphics were better, and at the time, that was like one of the sacrifices. Did you want a pretty game, or did you want a good driving game? You can't have both, right? Right. And, and and so th this is sort of in that era. So when they made that move, it's like, okay, you went that direction. And, and a set of course is a great sim. I am not even for a minute trying to take it down from anything. I'm just saying the lineage line went from, hey, we are directing towards this purist, but now we're kind of going a little more mainstreamy sim. And, and, and pass your own judgment on what that means. And then Competizione was sort of like, another slight twist and turn to that story and mm -hmm. and so for me that is the part that i do reference because those who are fans of netcar might want to know that angle on it when talking about competition uh Cor assetto corsa um but because i try to judge each game on its own merit and the judgment that I use is based on who I feel that they have designed it for and marketed it to. 
And so whenever I review anything, that's the first thing I do is I'm like, well, who did they make this for? You know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what were they trying to accomplish? Yeah, because it wasn't made for Sean Cole. You know, or maybe it was. But, you know, each one was made for a specific type of person, fan. And so I try to go there first when I look at it. And there is a big difference between a set of Corsa and, and Netcar Pro in that regard. Like, they became this super Ferrari-centric um, sim. Right, yes. And so if you were a Ferrari fan, this was like the sim of sims, right? This is the holy grail of sims, a set of Corsa. Like, look at this. I've got 39 different Ferraris or whatever there is. Mm -hmm. and, and a few other makes had a, a really huge representation as well. And, and, and so on that respect, I'm like, well, this is obviously, and, and all the tracks were like, you know, Mugello and like, like even the test tracks and, you know, it was very Italian. And, and so I'm like, well, they're obviously going for a Euro crowd, um, or Ferrari fan, which is international, of course. And so it's like, that's how I judge the game. And it's like, if that's not your cup of tea, then you're not going to like it no matter what anyway. So I, as a reviewer, have to re review it in that manner. Um, so yeah, I change every sim. Um, and you can say the same thing, but like I racing to Papyrus. You know, it's the same company. It's the same lineage. There are differences, but then there are these core similarities. And then over time, I start to find that their physics and force feedback relationship are a family too. Like this is the way these developers feel it should feel. Right. And and you can start to count on that too. So when when they make a big change in force feedback or or feeling or go to a different game engine, which is going to totally change everything. So when you look at mm -hmm. Competizione versus Corsa, and it's like wait they shouldn't be that far apart, but yet they are. And, you know, and, and there's a lot of common ground, but this was like the bigger change because like, wow, new engine, it's not one-to-one. -one. Um, so that's why I do like that relationship to the old because like, wow, well, how have they, how and what made the change in their path, you know? So, yeah, anyway, that's that's kind of my one-two on. I don't know if I directly answered the questions giving you my philosophy on reviewing. <laughs> no, just like I said, I think the the I think we had a really good discussion. We, you know, I think there were some differences of opinion not only from us but from the audience, which is absolutely fine. I encourage that thing. Uh that kind of thing. Um, but I always kind of want to flesh those out and you know, I, I realize in myself, sometimes I'm not, I try to be good at explaining, but sometimes I just, I, you know, you're doing this live. I think people have to understand doing this live is really difficult because it's so easy to forget something because you automatically already know it. And so you're trying to make a salient point and you just kind of skip over something and, and somebody that doesn't know you or somebody that is not familiar with the topic goes, what, I don't, that's not right. right. Or you completely forgot blank. And it's like, well, okay, you're right. And it's, so the point being is that it's, it's easy to miss things. And so, like I said, that we had a really good, I thought we had a really good dialogue last week with the live show audience and between us and I, and ACC was just the catalyst for that larger discussion. So I just think that people are, are thinking about these things, you know, how, how are we supposed to take in information about the reviews? You know, why, why was Billy always saying, be careful pre-ordering, be careful buying early. And if you're going to buy early, it's a gamble and you have to be okay with that risk. Mm-hmm. Because you don't know the product that you're getting. Uh, when you get that product, just like you said, take it for what it is. You know, I think on one hand, a publisher sits there and looks at, we need it to say something about what happened before. In other words, there's a reason why it keeps getting called Call of Duty. Right. People know Call of Duty. And it could be right. a radically different game, but people know that name. Right. 
And when uh, they make a, example. and when they Go make ahead. a big turn, they are taking a huge risk because that fan base that's calling on that yes. title to give them a certain thing, it better be really good if they're going to take a big change. Right. You know? So what sales wise can help when you use a name like that can also hurt you when you make a right. big turn. And I think I think people are kind of indirectly understanding. Maybe they don't think about it this deep, but uh, I have heard a handful of people mention it that maybe it shouldn't have been called a set of Corsa. Right. Maybe it should have been called, you know, Blanc Pain Competizione. <laughs> right. Something. Yeah. Something like that. But you, as a publisher and even as a developer, you run the risk of alienating people because here's this brand that you've built this IP. You've built this IP. You've registered the trademarks. You've done all the work. And now we're going to do a whole new IP. A, it makes those people feel like you're leaving them in the dust, right? right? Here's this. So now you're trying to drag people in that direction going, well, no, 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 no. This is a set of courses still because we're using the same philosophy, right? We're making a sim. We're making a realistic sim. This is going to be the most advanced thing we've done. Please come with us. Please go from right. a set of Corsa over to a set of Corsa competition. And that's a hard balance. And I think the I think what's working against it was a set of Corsa, the yep. name, because people see that or hear that. And if they're not totally familiar with what what it's doing, hey man, a set of Corsa had if you're on PC. I said, of course, I had mod support and it had this and it had that. And then you get over to ACC and it doesn't have any of those things. Right. And. And yet that, people are going to assume that right out of the, the gate. Right answer. Yeah. I don't know what the right answer is for that one, but. Yeah. No, it's tough. And then, but if you think back in time, you know, and maybe, um, I can't remember what you're talking about, but it's like one of the things that's really changed for me also is. Back in the day, we saw really huge leaps, you know, like yes, I from would agree eight with that. to sixteen bit or sixteen to thirty two. Generate, or, yeah. When you, you got know. a new console generation, it was a huge leap in technology. Remember when they used to give you like you polygon counts because it was a big deal? Uh -huh. Oh, now we have one hundred and twenty poly, you know, and, and it's like now they don't even talk about it. It's like irrelevant number. They're all so many and so wonderful that that's not even a way to judge them anymore. Um, I don't think we see those kind of leaps anymore. You know, uh, if you think back in time, lineage doing that, hey, what do you take from the old review? Well, think about Grand Theft Auto. How many, was it one or two that were the f top down only? I think it was the first two. I remember actually yeah. somebody coming to my house and brought a PlayStation and, and Grand Theft Auto and we just laughed. <laughs> You're like, I can't believe I could do that. You just and, run people over, but it was and, top down. And it was and it was so cheap. Like if you were to fire it up right now, you'd be like, Really? This is what we were oh, like yeah. going it's nuts an, over? It would be an indie title. Yeah. It would be an indie title. Yeah. Yeah. And yet it was insanely different and awesome at the time. And then when they went to three, you could be like, Oh, well, this is dangerous. You know, this is a top down game. You can't turn it into a first person it's game. It's on the PS two now yeah. and yep. But then now look at Grand Theft Auto. I mean, it's right. like, you know, I mean, and I don't know if there's, any, I don't know. I've never met anybody who doesn't like Grand Theft Auto in some way, shape, or form. Like, just. I don't play them, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my jam. <laughs> my God, I could, I could go play that right now. <laughs> uh, oh, I know you can. I've seen you do it. Yeah, it's quite hysterical. Yeah, I love that game. Oh, it's so much fun. They should throw Lego into Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Get up. Oh, and on that note, I that's thought fine. we were clear of that, Lego. That was um, a closer, right? There. That's how you end a show, is it not? That's right. That is, that is it. We got no. I got nothing left after that. So I appreciate uh, the people that gave me gave us something to talk about. And E three, uh, yeah, E three sounds. God, I'm really bummed. Yeah, I I... to try that motion rig. Wow. Damn. Yeah, that that was that was worth the try. And I don't get to try WRC eight. But there was oh, well. so little like it was not the show to travel to this year for Sim Racer. But right. but that doesn't mean that the things that weren't 
that were there weren't cool. The things that were there were very cool. There was just very little there for us. Um, and it was kind of unfortunate in that respect. But it's such a spectacle. It's always, I mean, it's, it's, it a, is, it's it a, is a, incredible. <laughs> I, I could not believe it. I was, people always would talk about it. And then when I walked in and I got to walk in when they were building the sets and then right. all of a sudden, you know, I was helping out. I leave, I come in Tuesday morning, you know, that's when the public, uh, the, well, that's when the press comes in early and then the public comes in later. If I remember right. Yeah. And it was in, it looked like a disaster zone Monday night. And then Tuesday you walk in, you're like, holy Just shit, look total, at this. This is amazing. Total transformation. Yeah. Yeah. It was incredible. <laughs> so if you, if um, you ever get the chance, if you're into not just sim racing, but if you're into games, it is, as long as it stays around, it is one of the things that you've got to try to go to because you just don't quite grasp the scope and the size and just the, some of the booths are just so impressive. Yeah. And, and it's even amazing just looking at it like, wow, somebody was able to sit somewhere else and like, draw you know some kind of drawing pro and like plot out this whole thing like mm -hmm. and then it was built and then they never really i mean it, like i don't think companies build their booths it's not like they went rent a warehouse and build the whole thing and walk around their mock-up you know they build it all in their minds on paper yeah, they work with the co there's companies that actually build those booths. And so they work with the company and say yes, no. And so those companies then just go off of plans. And then, with, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Monday night, I left it, I don't know, nine, maybe eight, nine o'clock. I don't even remember what it was, but it was, it was later in the evening. There's people with circular saws still, I mean, yeah. they're just, and nothing's put together. So I'm like, this is going to be every. I mean, there's just boards and pallets everywhere. The carpet. I mean, they've got stuff on the carpet so that the carpet doesn't get like, ruined and all that. And you're and, like, there's and, no way. And there's like trash piled up to like this high yep. in like every aisle. I mean, it's just it's 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 madness. It's it's it would be really cool to watch a good time like any any trade show. It doesn't uh, yeah, matter. A time lapse. Yeah. A time lapse of the whole build up, shut down. You know, it's just it's it's fascinating um it's an orchestrated machine it's just in the it's way an they orchestrated chaotic <laughs> mess yeah and and the way they can take one show out and the next show in is like a 24-hour turnaround like like as soon as they get them out that place is cleaned up and the next one's coming in you know um just you know we'll be out of there uh, you know well closing up is a lot easier than setting up that's for sure yeah um, so anyway, it's it's been fun. It, it made for a good week, and it's why this show is pre-recorded, of course. <laughs> yep. Sorry we couldn't do it live, but uh, we appreciate everybody watching. Uh, real quick, what do you got going on in the next, well, now week and a half? Um, E3 updates over the weekend. I'm going to do that. My okay. Euro trip is on hold up in the air. Um Still trying to figure out. So I think next week I might spontaneously be back to normal. I think the okay. trip has been postponed one week. Um, but I'll know more right. about that over the weekend. So hopefully by Monday I can give updates on what's really going on. Um, and then what else? Uh, truck. I got to get some truck racing in. So Friday night I get my life back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I, I got to get some truck. We have a truck race Friday night, don't we? Um, yep, we have a truck Iowa? race Friday night. Um, I have that right here somewhere. Um, Iowa. We did Texas? Yes. Yep, the 14th. We'll have to reschedule. 14th, yeah, Texas is now, now at the end of the year. Uh, the 14th, yeah, Iowa, the only .88 mile track of our whole season. Um, so we have that, and then I want to do the Pro 4 trucks. I got to score points for week one. So... I'm running this season. Did you see court. the? Did you see real quick the the track cut that people are doing at uh, Wild West, not Wild Horse, but the bigger track, Wild West. Uh huh. No. So when you go down the the main straightaway, 
right? Uh -huh. You make that hairpin at the top of the hill, uh -huh. and the pits are on the outside. Yeah. You know how the pits go downhill and then make that right hand? There is apparently, I saw people do it. I haven't tested it myself, but you go back down that hill, right? You make that jump, uh -huh. and then you turn right, and you bypass that whole lower loop, hairpin really? to the right, and you just cut straight across and then make that left-hand turn. Oh, no. Yeah. Oops. Wow. See. I mean, I was what I don't know. I was watching people do it. <clears throat> so I don't know what the stipulations are. Like if they if that was an official race or not, I couldn't quite tell, but I was watching people just all of a sudden they come right down. Right. And they just make that right turn and just shoot. All right. Next right out. next week's topic is that cheating. Oh. oh, oh. All right. We won't answer it here. You'll have to tune in next week. Is that cheating? And the only reason I say that is because that's just a super extreme version of like the spa cut when we're talking endurance racing. Mm -hmm. Right? It's no different. Same argument. Same argument gets now we're just a semantics of feet, right? <laughs> is Ooh. that cheating? And if you we'll have things it. and if you Go have ahead. something that you think would be a better topic for next week's show, be sure to send it either to me at Sean at thesimhit.com. And what's the best way to get a hold of you, Billy? Do you like people contacting you, or is that a no-no? That's a no-no. Twitter works. <laughs> All right, Twitter. Twitter, Instagram, you know, strange underscore Billy. There you go. So, yeah, if you have ideas for the show, something you'd like us to talk about, uh, we'll add it to the show. In addition to is that cutting or cheating, which maybe we'll talk about <laughs> next week. we anyway, to rile people up with that one. Billy, thank you for staying up till midnight. Well, 1243. I have to wake up. I was going to say, we've almost we've almost made one o'clock. Thank you for wake. staying up this late. I have five hours from now, my alarm goes off, and I have to work a really long day tomorrow. So anyway, it's been fun. Nonetheless, it's been different because it was that nighttime show with a little bit different of mindset than that AM vibe. So got to like that. If you like that, maybe we'll do a live show on Friday night. If you think we should do a Friday night live show one of these days, let us know that even because uh, we're always – listening even if we're not here talking with you in chat anyway billy thank you very much thank you have a great weekend everybody get out there do some racing this is beyond the sim i'm sean cole that's billy strange and we will see you on the track see ya <laughs>